Good morning, grade two. So good to see you again. Well, actually, I can't see you, but you can see me. What do you think? My granddaughter, Lindsay, is going to cosmos cosmetology school, and uh, she had to work on someone to do their hair, so she did my hair last night. And I went to sleep last night and uh, woke up, and voila, here it is. Still all sorts of curls, huh? Pretty special. I feel like I blend right in, though, huh? I don't know. You let me know what you think. Today is Wednesday, April 1st, 2020, and this is the first day of a new month here for us. And so remember when you're writing your math especially, you've got new numbers here. April is our, the fourth month of the year, and uh, it's day number one and the 24 are 2020. Today in math, we're going to talk about mixed numbers, okay? Um, and you have a worksheet that I'd like to work through with you. So if you want to pause the video and get your math binder so that you have the worksheet that goes along with um, lesson 111, okay? Get the worksheet that goes along with lesson 111. It looks like that, all right? So that's the one we need for today. We have kind of part one of working with mixed numbers, okay? And uh, then we'll talk about the other things on the board. So right now, if you want to put it on pause and go and get that, and then I'll see you in a second, I'm going to go to my other screen. All right, so here you have uh, your page. And what a mixed number is, is it is writing a whole number, and that's our counting numbers. Whole numbers are our counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, any of those numbers. You put those digits together and that's a whole number. And then we've been doing fractions before. Well, when you put a whole number and a fraction together, you write a mixed number. Guess what? You guys have been doing that already. Think about when you measure your line segments, and sometimes your line segments are, let's say, one and one half inches or three and one half inches. That's a mixed number. So you're already writing those. Now, today we're going to look at pattern blocks and writing the fraction for pattern blocks in a mixed number, and we're going to have our hexagon be one. Okay, so if you think about that hexagon there, that is worth one, all right? Well, then what's the value of our second shape here? What's the value of our trapezoid? Well, we know from work that we've done before, it takes two of these to fill up that one shape. So two, that means our bottom denominator is going to be a two, that means one half. So how many whole pieces do we have? One and one half. How do we write our mixed number? We're going to put that in the answer blank there. Sorry if my page is kind of going crazy here, isn't it? Is it focused for you there? So our mixed number is again one and one half. And notice how my fraction is the same size as the number that I write, okay? So the whole number that I write is going to be equal to the same size when I'm writing my one half. You don't wanna write one and one half. That can make it look like 11 halves, okay? So avoid doing that. Can you see how I did that? You don't want to do it real small like that, okay? All right, so this is how not to do it. All right, let's look at our next one. Now we're going to look at the hexagons, but then a triangle. So what we have to think about for our fraction is how many triangles can fit inside one hexagon. You remember? I bet I can hear you saying it, six. We can fit six triangles inside one hexagon. So that means this is going to be what fraction? One sixth. All right, I'm going to move those off to the side. How many hexagons do we have? We have two all together, right? This is one. This is another one, so that's two all together. So how will we write our mixed 
number. The total number of whole pieces we have, that's a 2. And then what's our fraction? 2 and 1 sixth. And this is a spot where you use that word and, 2 and 1 sixth. All right, let me slide my paper up here a little bit. Let's see. Trying to adjust it so you can see better. I feel like my numbers aren't showing up very well. Let's take a look at number three. How many hexagons do we have? Just one. Hmm, we've got two parallelograms here. You remember how many parallelograms it takes to make a hexagon? Three. One, two, three. So we don't just have one third. We have one third here. I'm writing it real light, and one third here. So our total fraction is two thirds, isn't it? So how would we do our mixed number? We would write a one and then two thirds. One and two thirds. Very good. Now on the bottom here, it asks us to trace pattern blocks to show these mixed numbers. Well, guess what? You don't have pattern blocks at home. So how can we do this? Well, let's use a different shape. Okay, let's use a different shape to show one and one third. You certainly could draw the hexagons and parallelograms if you want, but what if we draw two squares? Now that means we want our squares to be as close to the same size as they can be. They don't want to just be similar, they want to be congruent. All right, how would we divide it into thirds? Right like so. And this time, I would like you to shade it in. So this is one whole square. And this is how we're going to show our other piece. We're going to color in one third of it. That shows one and one third. All right, you take time to draw that. One and one third. If we are going to show it with our pattern block shape, so we would trace one hexagon and one parallelogram. That would show one and one third. Okay, but it's okay to use different shapes since we don't have those at home. Um, to do. Again, if you want to draw like that, I'm okay with that too. And then it says show two and three sixths on the back of this paper. Okay, two and three sixths. You certainly can turn your paper over. I'm going to show you an, an example right here on the bottom of this page. Uh, maybe you would want to use uh, circles. So we can do one circle two circles and again I'm trying to make my circles as much the same as I can and to divide a circle into six we make one line across the middle and then we make a V on the top and an upside down V on the bottom so again we're going to color in to show that we've got two and three sixths. So I'm going to color in one, two, three pieces. Two and three sixths. That's how we show that piece. You don't need to send me a copy of this at all. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we did this all together. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do more work with mixed numbers. And now I'm going to head back to my other screen. Hi! Here I am. Alrighty. Um, so mixed numbers. So you may you'll have some work to do with that on whoops on your math. I'm bumping everything off the table here. Um, 
don't think you'll have anything on your lesson yet today. Um, so that was just some practice for us. Um, but if you, we'll be working on it again tomorrow and then we'll start to have it on our math soon. Um, just a couple of reminders here on the board as well. Um, if you haven't already read your Mice and Beans story from your hardcover reading book, please make sure that you do that and take the AR test on it. Um, you should have finished your government page. Okay, this one should be all finished now today. And make sure that you have read everything and done the back. Okay, there's a crossword puzzle to do. And then there's some work to do uh, down here with this map. And this is just a little story to read, so make sure you've read that as well. So make sure you've read all of your selection, okay, and have done the work on Studies Weekly as well, because there's a lot of extra videos and things that go along with that um, that you can do there too. And there are some little quizzes that you can take um, after each section often as well. Um, I'll have this up for you to take a test on. Let's see how you did. All right, see how you do on that. And then um, you can also start reading the sun for science, okay? Now on the sun, there is a question on the inside bottom part here. So make sure you answer that question for me, okay? Um, and then you've got some work to do on the back. Thankfully, we've had some uh, sunnier days here. So you might be able to do this uh, experiment up on the top at home to sh make a rainbow. And if it works, send me a video of it. I'd love to see that. And then you have some work to do here on the bottom that talks about rainbows as well, okay? Uh, so that's your work for this week. You can keep practicing those spelling words on Spelling City. On Thursday, we'll take a test on it, our final test on it, and then uh, your best score will be what I'll put in the grade book on your spelling test there, okay? Remember, if you have any questions, make sure you give me a call. Have a great day.